it was said about Beach Carroll, a mighty oak has fallen in the forest. Certainly it could be said of Dr. Charles Stanley, he was a mighty oak, a man of God, man of prayer, and as some labeled, America's pastor. I'd like to share with you some influences that God used in my life through Dr. Charles Stanley, who went to be with the Lord on Tuesday, April the 18th. A lasting legacy. Four ways that I'd like to share with you to remember Dr. Charles Stanley as a mentor, a lasting legacy. I first was introduced to Dr. Stanley in 1982 after the Lord saved me. He was on television and I would tune in on Sunday night and God used him to confirm the Lord's calling in my life. I heard him share a message in regards to Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. And in the message, he shared very succinctly and passionately how Isaiah saw the Lord in this passage, high lifted up, the days of King Uzziah. And seeing the Lord, he came away saying, woe is me, a man of unclean lips, I'm undone. And then the seraphim took the coals off the altar and touched the lips of Isaiah, and God said, whom shall we send? Who will go? And Isaiah said, here am I, Lord, send me. And Dr. Stanley was preaching on this. God confirmed in my life that there first had to be the confession. I was wrestling over whether God was calling me to the ministry or not. I felt like he had something special for me in 1983. But it was through this message Dr. Stanley shared. The confession, woe is me, the cleansing, the touching of the lips, and then the calling. Here am I, send me. It was confirmed there along with another passage of Scripture, Luke chapter 16, to, for the Lord spoke to my heart through his word by his spirit that I was to go and warn the five brothers lest they come to this place of torment. There's a second way I'd like to remember Dr. Stanley today is not only the confirmed calling, but the mighty mentoring. Here in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, in verse 7, a writer whom I believe was Paul said, Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation, their lifestyle. And I would certainly say, I know Charles Stanley was not perfect, but he certainly stayed the course. And I had the privilege of seeing Dr. Stanley on a cruise that my wife and I, Deanna, were able to take back in 2006. And he gave me this book, Charles Stanley Handbook Christian for Christian Living. And he signed it. I treasure that. He said to Randy, Charles Stanley, Psalm 1611, in his presence is fullness of joy at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. In addition to that, he gave me a Bible in touch, Charles Stanley, Life Principles Bible. And he also signed it as well, which I appreciated. I had some time to spend to talk with him and pray with him. I actually asked him to pray for me and some things I was going through, and he took the time. It was a blessing to spend that personal time with Charles Stanley. I reminded him of uh, one of his mentors, and I knew it uh, before I talked with him. I said, uh, do you miss Dr. Stanley, Dr. Stephen Olford? Dr. Olford was a mentor of Dr. Stanley. He just lit up like a light bulb when I mentioned Dr. Stephen Olford. He said, oh, I miss him. He was a giant, Dr. Olford was. He was, in addition to being a mentor to Charles Stanley, he was a mentor to Adrian Rogers and others, including myself. He came to the school, Luther Rice Seminary. By the way, I knew that Dr. Stanley had graduated with his doctor of ministry from Luther Rice, 
And I checked that out before the Lord led me to go there and go through uh, the school of uh, Luther Rice Seminary for a bachelor degree, two master's degree, master of ministry, master of divinity, and then a uh, doctor of ministry in 2009, and then later went on for a further uh, post-study of PhD in Bible prophecy. But uh, God used Dr. Stanley, and Stephen Olford came to the school every year for 10 years. I had the privilege of sitting under that man of God, he pastored the church at Calvary Baptist Church up in New York, and he was a missionary's son, and he had a place in Memphis, Tennessee. I had the privilege of going there in 1997 and spending time with Dr. Oford in the area of, he was a prince of preachers and a mentor to many preachers, and Dr. Stanley being one of them. Mighty mentors. Are you mentoring someone, going beside them, going before them, going behind them? Praise the Lord for... God sending mentors in our life. The third way I'd like to remember Dr. Stanley would be pastoral persecution. You are aware of the fact that when he first went to First Baptist Atlanta, I've heard him talk about it. I don't know all the details, but a man literally hit him, either when he was preaching or when he finished preaching. And, boy, that spoke volumes to me as to uh, the call of the Lord and the endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Paul said, Endure affliction. Do the work of evangelists. Make full proof of thy ministry. I, my departure is at hand. I'm ready to be offered. I fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord of the righteous judge shall give me on that day, not to me only, but to all of them who love his appearing. So I would like to remember and thank God for men that God used in your life. And you need to stop right now and praise the Lord for uh, how the Lord uses uh, other men as iron sharpens iron, a friend sharpens the counts of a friend. That's Proverbs 27 and verse 17. There's a fourth way I'd like to remember Dr. Stanley, and that was the, he was no doubt a man of prayer. I thought of James 5, 16, where James talks about Elijah being like passion as we are. And in this particular verse, he said, confess your faults one to another, pray for one another that you might be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And Dr. Stanley, you could tell, was a man of prayer. He preached very practical messages and no telling how many countless of millions of people uh, that have uh, perhaps come to a relationship with Jesus Christ uh, through the faithfulness and the preaching of the Word of God. God honors His Word. And so I want to close on our time together as we remember Dr. Stanley and purpose in our heart to finish faithful. At 90 years young, he finished his course. He's kept the faith, as far as I know. And henceforth, there's crowns to be either rewarded or suffer loss at the judgment seat of Christ. Will you receive a crown? Oh, my, it'll be worth it when we see Jesus. It really will. And so I want to pray with you now, and I want you to join me in prayer. And... Let's pray the Lord will help us to be faithful, as Jesus said to the church of Smyrna, be faithful unto death. And, of course, that was in regards to persecution and even martyrdom. And so let's pray together and thank God for good memories and those who the Lord has used in our life to make us and to encourage us and to go before us. Father, thank you for the life and legacy of uh, your servants, so many in our lives. And I pray for those listening now that as we just take a moment to reflect, we're not self-made men and self-made women. Instead, Lord, you've used people in our life to pour into us, to influence us, to point us to you, Jesus, and to your will and your calling, your purpose, your plan. And I pray now that uh, you'd help us by your grace and by the filling of your Holy Spirit, to be faithful to the finish. And once when we see you, we'll bow at your feet and join with so many who have gone on before us, singing and praising you because you're the worthy lamb. We love you and give you praise for your love, your precious blood, your forgiveness of our sin. And be glorified through our life and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name. God bless now, and thank you for joining us. God be with you till we meet again.